Welcome to Chill Play Episode 1, where I'm going to play games that kind of would make good background or white noise, or I even know a lot of people, myself included, like to fall asleep putting a Let's Play on in the background, or if you just want something to listen to while you play a game yourself, then this is the series for you. Or if you want to actively watch it and see what's going on. All right. So what are we playing? Gazillionaire, the fantasy business simulation game. In Gazillionaire, your goal is to become an interstellar tycoon by trading moon ferns, ogle sand, and lava lamps across the galaxy of Gog. So, yep, yeah, it's a business simulator, and as you can see, it has a very kind of crazy, wacky art style unlike anything I've ever seen. It's another one of those neat little quirky games from the 90s. So... Let's get into it. Your primary means of making money are going to be basically playing the commodities market, but there are other ways as well that we'll get into. So welcome to Gazillionaire. For the first time in 700 years, Emperor Dred Nicholson has granted you and a handful of other newly formed trading companies permission to operate inside the Kukubian colonies. As president of a trading company, you must make a profit, transporting essential commodities between the seven planets of Kukubia. Your goal is to build a trade empire by investing in larger ships, buying warehouses, and skillfully outmaneuvering your competitors. So we'll start a new game. We're going to go with the tutorial mode, because that way it's going to gradually introduce uh, all the various aspects and things that you can do as we go. If it's your first time playing and you just jump right in, it might be a little overwhelming with all the decisions you have to make, like, oh, I gotta pay my taxes and pay my crew, do I want to invest in the stock market, do I want to buy advertising, etc., etc. So, this way, we're not diving in head first, we're just going to wade into the pool a little bit at a time. So here are our competitors. You can see it gives you the name of their company, as well as a brief little summary of their general business strategy. So, Gizzy Shipping is freewheeling and chaotic, Trading Core 4, Buy the Book in Neutral, you got Cautious Old Guard, etc., etc. You want to be aware of this guy in the lower right, Hoffmeister. He's ruthless and aggressive because nobody ever won at capitalism by being ethical. Oh, yeah, he went there. If you're going to get booty blasted at what I said, just please do the mature thing and scream it and yell at me in all caps in the comment section with plenty of profanity and ad hominems thrown in. So, that being said, let's continue. All right, we need to name our company. In honor of my very good friend Jeremy Kellerman celebrating his 10th anniversary as a content creator on YouTube, we are going to name our company Kellerman Industrial. Go check his channel out, Jeremy Kellerman. You won't regret it. So our next decision, we have to click on the spaceship we want to purchase. Now there are a few aspects to look at when deciding on a ship to get. So you'll see here, this is the ship I'm going to go with, the Stinger 12. It comes with a high-powered 7-corp engine. The more corps, the faster your ship will be, and speed is very important in this game. It requires four crew members to operate, so the more crew members a ship requires to operate, the more salary you're going to end up having to pay them. And, of course, cargo capacity is also another very important aspect of your ship. With more cargo capacity, you could buy and sell more commodities at a time and turn a bigger profit. So the one disadvantage to this particular ship is the fuel tank is only 12 tons. But honestly, I've never had fuel tank capacity really be an issue in this game. So I'll show you just a few of the others here, just so you get an idea of <clears throat> how the different ships can be. Here's the Whaler 2000, and it has a massive cargo space, as you can see here. A lot of fuel capacity, and oh yeah, passenger capacity is another aspect of the ship you want to look at. If you can transport more passengers at once, you can make more money doing that. So the disadvantages here is that this ship only has a two-corp engine and requires six crew members to operate. So yeah, that two-corp engine means it's going to be really slow, and that means your competitors are going to beat you to whatever planet you're traveling to, and they're going to snatch up all the commodities at a good price before you can. 
So that's going to be a no-go for us. And this ship down here is one that looks kind of like Onyx from Pokemon. It's made to be more of a passenger vessel, which I guess if you want to make your strategy that you're going to make your primary income from transporting passengers rather than cargo, then I guess that's why you would go with this. I've never tried it. It requires 12 crew members to operate. That's, that's pretty hefty. And it has a really small cargo bay. So, you know, not really efficient for transporting goods. All right, so let's buy our Stinger 12. Yes. Mr. Zinn, a wealthy and somewhat fickle financier, generously loans you the 100,000 Kubars necessary to get your company going. Kubars are the fiat currency that is used in this universe. However, you must pay Mr. Zinn 4% interest per week. Mr. Zinn wishes you the best of luck on your new venture and hopes he will never have to repossess your ship. I hope so too, Mr. Zinn. I hope so too. Okay. So, we have week one we start at, and you'll notice down here it says begin turn. Each turn consists of one week. And over here it's going to list of the ranking of where we're at as far as net worth. You can see we all begin the same, 50,000 Kubars in the hole. And our status is Unfortunate Merchant, but that will be changing soon enough, don't worry. And so far none of the companies have gone bankrupt. I don't know exactly how far in the red you have to go before you become bankrupt, or how many turns you have to go not paying off the, your loan or whatever, but we're not going to go bankrupt, hopefully. Anyway, so let's begin our turn. Welcome to Frack, home of Voyager's Insurance. All right, and then it's just telling us the tutorial is going to gradually introduce each aspect of the game. You begin with 50,000 in cash and a debt of 100,000 Q bars to Mr. Zinn. So let's get started. And here's just a bar graph of our net worth. As you can see, as we're all 50,000 in the hole, we're all equal here on the graph. So let's get into it. You could see a lot of these choices here are blanked out. That's because those are aspects that will be introduced gradually as we play through the tutorial. So let's go to the marketplace. This is your primary means of how you'll be making money is buying and selling these various wacky commodities that you see over here, taking them to a different planet where, where they fetch a higher price and then selling them and making a profit. So, as we can see here on the left of the screen, it tells you what the item is. And under this column, it will tell you your cargo. That's how many tons of it are in your ship. Of course, we start out with nothing. On frack, uh, this column will tell you how many tons of the commodity are available on the current planet you're at. In our case, we're on frack. And if you have any of the commodity in your cargo, then in this column, it will tell you how much you paid for it. And of course, in this column, we have the market price. That will tell you how much it will sell for on the planet that you're currently at. Then finally, this column on the right, you have the price range. That will tell you the minimum and the maximum price that that item will fetch. So when buying, of course, as they say, you want to buy cheap, sell deep. So you're going to look for commodities in which the market price here is going to be close to uh, the number on the left side here of the price range. So let's see what we got. Exotic. Um, it's a 291, so they're not really that close. Same with gems. Uh, X fuels isn't a good deal. Oxygen isn't really a good deal. Umbrellas are a good deal. We can buy umbrellas for 42 Q bars per ton. You can see that's really close to the minimum of the price range 40. So we're going to buy out all the umbrellas. You'll just click the item you want to buy. Click buy. And you can manually enter in how many tons you want to buy here. Or as a shortcut, if you just want to buy like a low amount, a middle amount, or the upper amount will put in the maximum amount that you could buy. And we want to buy them out since we're getting such a good deal. So we'll just click upper and we'll buy 97 tons of umbrellas. 
And that will almost fill our cargo bay. You really do want to make full use of your cargo bay, so let's see if there's anything else we just can't round out that little bit with. Uh, jelly beans. Jelly beans are going at a good deal. We can buy them for 12 Q-bars, very close to the minimum price range of 10, so just click that, click buy. Uh, we can only buy three tons because we have a limited amount of cargo space left, and click OK. So now we're making full use of our ship's cargo bay. So once you've bought your commodities, let's exit the marketplace. Now let's take them to another planet and sell them. When journeying to another planet, it's generally a good idea to pick one that is adjacent to the planet that you are on. Otherwise, if you try traveling too far, one of your competitors will probably beat you to the planet and snatch up all of the commodities at a good price. So, we don't want that to happen, so let's go to Quegg. Um. Alright, and then week two, it tells us where we all stand. You can see there's not much variance now because we're all just still kind of starting out. And our status is inefficient business person. Okay. Let's begin the turn. Welcome to Quegg, the smuggler's haven. Here's a line chart showing the history of the company's net worth. So Kellerman Industrial, we're in the blue. We're, uh, it's, you probably can't see it, but we're like right there between these two lines. So now that we have commodities, let's take them to the marketplace on Quegg. Now, you want to uh, hopefully find uh, one of your commodities that you own selling for a high price, like umbrellas here. You'll notice it'll tell us we paid 42 Q bars per ton for 97 tons of umbrellas, and umbrellas on Quegg are selling for 258 Q bars per ton. So we're going to click that. As you can see, there are zero tons of umbrellas on Quegg, so that's what is contributing to the high price there basic supply and demand. So we click umbrellas, we want to click sell. And since we'll turn such a profit on them, let's just click upper and sell them all out. And you can see we made a profit, 20,952 Q bars. Jelly beans, we could flip and make a profit, but really not much. Um, ooh, we could get a really good deal on ogle sand. That's, ogle sand is bottomed out on Quegg. You can see the market price is 70, literally the bottom price of the price range. So we definitely want to buy out all the ogle sand. And we've got a lot of cargo space to go. So what else can we get at a good deal? Anything? Uh, exotics, that's not a bad deal. We should buy out the exotic. It's one of the more expensive products you can see. So it has a, a higher maximum on the price range. So we'll buy out all the exotic. All right, anything else? Um, oxygen isn't a good deal. Umbrellas, we sold our umbrellas. Moon ferns, kind of in the middle. Uh, cantaloupe we can buy at a decent price, although you can see it doesn't really sell for much. We'll buy it anyway, just so we have something to trade. Okay, and I'm just going to hang on to my jelly beans, I guess. Because we could, like I said, we could flip them, but not for much. So, our cargo bay is full. Let's go back. Let's leave Quegg. And where are we going to go next? Let's, let's go to Mira. Yum. All right, week three. So, where are we at now? We are in fifth place here. With negative 37,047 Q bars, our status is unfortunate trader. All right, let's begin the turn. Welcome to Mira, home of Kakubian religion. So, we have our first aspect of the game being added. This turn, we're introducing a new feature called Zin's Loan. That was that dude at the beginning that said, that we borrowed money from. In order to purchase your spaceship, you took out a loan from Mr. Zin. Now you must... Begin to pay Mr. Zinn back. 
Mr. Zinn charges 4% interest per week. It takes one week to travel to a new planet and conduct business. In other words, one week, like I said, equals one game turn. Here's our line graph. Let's continue. And we'll pay off a little bit of Zinn's loan. Let's do our commodities trading first. So let's go to the marketplace. Now, it's anything we have selling for a good amount. Oh, yes. Look at this. We bought exotic for 127 QPARs per ton. It is selling at maximum price range right here on Mira, 720. So we're going to flip all of that and we're going to make a big, big profit. Great deal. Great deal. Indeed. 29,057 profit. Ooh, look at this. Ogle Sand 2 is going for 466 and we only paid 70. So we're getting really lucky with Mira here. This is good. We'll flip that. 37 grand. A cool 37 grand. Hey, even the jelly. Wow, everything we bought is selling for a high price here. We got really lucky, so we're just going to sell out everything. Great deal. Great deal. Yes, yes. All right, so 38 grand profit. Now we can go and pay back some of Mr. Zinn's loan. <laughs> All right, so our cash total, we have, we could pay off the whole loan in one chunk. In fact, I'm going to do that now just so we get that out of the, wait, did I buy, did I buy commodities yet? Okay, no, I'm not going to pay back the whole loan, just most of it. We want to save a little money so we could buy some stuff here that we could take to the next planet. So we'll pay back the loan. We'll pay uh, 80 grand of it. Click OK. OK, Waluigi, thanks. So you can see now we only have 20K left of the loan to pay back. Almost there. We left a little money for ourselves to buy some stuff here. So what's going for a good deal on Mira? Um, nothing's really going for a great deal. I mean, lava lamps look like the best deal we're going to get. Buy those for 169. So we'll yeah, buy those yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what else? Um, uh, gosh, there's nothing else I really want to buy. I mean, you want to make use of your cargo space, but I mean, you also don't want to sink money into a bad deal. So I might just cut and run with just lava lamps. Okay. All right, let's leave Mira, go to the next planet, and pray to goodness that frog legs are fetching a premium there. Let's go to Hork. Right. Hey, we are in first place with only negative 3,363 bars. Awesome. We're an unfortunate entrepreneur. Welcome to Hork, the media capital of Kukubia. Oh, listen to those sick beats. <laughs> All right, and we're adding another aspect of the game here. This turn, we're introducing a new feature called Supply. Oh, good. This is going to help us. The supply chart shows the supply of goods on each planet. If the supply is 100%, the commodities are plentiful, and the price tends to be low. If the supply is 0%, the goods are rare, and the price tends to be high. This should help you determine which planet is worth traveling to. This is very good because right now... Uh, before we knew what the supply is, we were just kind of going on a crapshoot on choosing a planet and hoping that whatever commodity we bought would be fetching a good price. So let's hope frog legs, or, or lava lamps, I mean, are going here. All right. Yes, good. We can flip these lava lamps and make a decent profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of those. All right. Made a cool 16.73 grand. Now, uh, what can we buy for a good deal? Hmm. Uh, again, there aren't really any great deals here. I think umbrellas would be our best bet. So we'll buy umbrellas. Um, whipped cream is kind of in the middle. Diapers, that's a bad deal. Uh, we sold lava lamps, gems. Uh, 
we'll buy out the gems now that we can look at the supply we'll determine where we'll go who needs gems the most so what you do is you click on supply you'll see it has a list of all the planets here so we'll go to the gems row and we'll see who has the lowest amount of gems loro so hopefully loro is close by as that will be the next planet we are traveling to so let's leave the marketplace um we have we have two th oh wait money okay so our net worth is 2369 let's pay off more of zin's loan so our total cash we have enough to pay it all back and we have already bought our commodities so we're going to pay back the whole loan uh, it's going to leave us with only a pitiful little amount of cash, but we're going to be selling some commodities here soon anyway, so we'll get that back. All right, where did we say we are going for gems? Loro. So we'll leave Hork. Luckily, Loro is close by. And hey, we're in first place. We're the only one to be in the green. Nice. Status, struggling merchant. Let's begin the turn. Welcome to Loro, the pleasure planet. Dig those Harry Belafonte tunes right there. All right, continue. So we'll go to the marketplace, and gems should be selling at a premium because there's low supply of them here. Yes, you can see they're selling for four fifty-three. That's not terribly much more than what we bought for them. Bought them for. But I just really wanted to make use of my, all my cargo space. So let's flip these. And yeah, we only made a 2.6 grand profit. Not the greatest. Uh, we don't want to sell umbrellas. We'll be taking a loss there. Can we please buy something for a good deal here? Jeez. <laughs> oh, great. We could buy cantaloupe for the bottom of the price range. But I mean, the most we could sell it at is 40 so these little small time commodities here like cantaloupe and jelly beans i don't know if they're really worth it even if you can get them at such a good deal hmm should we go for lava lamps i think we'll go for lava lamps so we'll buy yeah, those out yeah, yeah. so we'll check the supply now we have lava lamps and umbrellas in our cargo, so we want to look for planets that are jonesing for umbrellas and lava lamps. Okay, lava lamps. And so Hork has 25% lava lamps, 50% umbrellas. We did get umbrella, yeah, okay. Hork, uh, who's got the least umbrellas? Let's see. Ooh, Vex only has 1% umbrellas. Oh, but they're glutted with lava lamps. So do we go to the planet that has almost no umbrellas but a glut of lava lamps? Or do we go to Hork that has some lava lamp supply and a medium amount of umbrella supply? Let's see which one's closer by, Hork or Vex. Hork is there. Uh, they're equal. Okay, let's go to Hork. So you can see Zin's loan is at zero. Got that all paid off. All right, let's go to Hork. All right, so we went down to fourth place. Looks like we've been overtaken by Puffer Inc., Rook Transport, and Gizzy Shipping. All right. Now we are introducing a new feature called Loan. This allows you to borrow money from the Traders Union. I'm not sure what the difference is between taking out a loan from Mr. Zinn and taking out a loan from the Traders Union. Post-production note. Yes, I went back and realized that you can't take out a loan from Mr. Zinn at this point. 
Also, according to the Gazillionaire Wiki, by default, without any modifying the interest limit, if your loan goes above 200,000 kubars, you will lose and Mr. Zinn will have to repossess your ship. Maybe they have different interest rates or something? I don't know. But we can take out a loan now if we need it. What's that interest rate? 5% for a week. Okay. Zinn was 4%, wasn't it? Yes, 4%. Okay. And Zinn's credit limit is 200000 so <clears throat> we have a smaller credit limit here and more interest. Okay. So why would you even borrow from the traders union? I don't know. Let's go to the marketplace and flip some stuff. Okay. Yeah, Lava Lamps, you see, we'll make a good profit on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 indeed. We sell all that. Yeah. Umbrellas, we can make a profit, but really not much. I might want to hold on to those. Uh, yeah, I think we'll hold out on the umbrellas. We could do better than that. Uh, we can get a decent deal on Ogle Sand. So we'll buy that out just to use up our cargo space. And made an 11 and a half grand profit. So, we need to find planets that are wanting umbrellas and ogle sand. So, ooh, Mira has zero ogle sand, 64 umbrellas. Quegg has only 16% umbrellas, but is glutted with ogle sand. So, Mira is definitely the better choice here. That is where we'll go next. All right, and luckily it's adjacent, so we can make it there before anybody else. All right, where we at? Where we at? Hey, we're number two. Okay, just below Gizzy Shipping. And we're a struggling trader. All right, now we are introducing a new feature called Voyager's Insurance. Now you can buy insurance to protect your company from unforeseen disasters. <sighs> so I'm reluctant to say this and jinx myself. But I've never had a big problem with getting hit by these just random natural disasters that you'd want to take out insurance against. So I'm going to refrain from taking out insurance. And of course, you know, Murphy's Law. Because I said that, we're going to hit with, get hit with every disaster this game can throw at us. All right, let's go to the marketplace and make some money. So Ogle Sand is selling at a premium. So we're going to sell all of the ogle sand we have. Make 12 grand. Uh, umbrellas, we'd be slightly losing a bit. I need to get rid of these damn umbrellas. All right. And can we get a good deal on anything? Um, yes, polyester. We'll buy the polyester. So there's still some space in our cargo hold. Um, nothing else is really a good deal, though. Tell you what, 88% filled. Might just cut and run with 88%. So, let's get rid of these umbrellas. Who has the lowest supply of umbrellas? Okay, Quag and Vex are both wanting umbrellas pretty bad. Uh, what's the other cargo we have? Polyester. Okay, so... Of Quegg and Vex, who's more lacking of polyester? Vex. So we'll go to Vex and dump these off. Won't get insurance. All right, Vex is a little far away, so hopefully the competitors don't end up beating here. We have a pretty fast ship. I think we bought the fastest or one of the fastest ships. Welcome to Vex, the capital of Kikubia. All right, now this turn we're introducing a new feature called View City. This feature allows you to look at the city you are visiting and read about the planet's history. All right, so that doesn't really make a difference in the gameplay. It just lets you explore the lore behind each planet. And they filled out the lore pretty good. And you also get to see like a visual representation for View City. So. Here's the city of the planet of Vex, and if you click time here, I'm pretty sure this just explains uh, 
the time that uh, this whole universe goes by. Uh, from okay. So, because he had nothing better to do, Mono Chizo declared that one cuckoo day should equal the time it takes a cup of bull juice to evaporate from a freshly opened bull nut shell, which equals the time it takes light to travel 18.6 billion miles. Now, I actually calculated this out earlier. If my math is correct, I believe that's about 27.77 hours. So, uh, you can pause if you want to read the rest of this. And then it'll tell you about Vex. And like I said, there's a fair amount of lore here, so you could pause and read this if you want. Okay. Now eventually, also, one of these options will be, uh, there's like a, a special, like, service or something you can do at each different planet. And each planet has its own unique kind of uh, good or service to offer, so you can make use of that. I forgot what Vex's was. I think maybe you could petition the government to lower taxes eventually when taxes become a thing. So let's go to the marketplace and see what we can't sell. I can finally get rid of these umbrellas and turn okay profit. So we'll dump those off. Great. Deal. Polyester, we can make a profit. But I think we could hold out to do better. Unless there's just really good deals. We're definitely going to buy out the lava lamps. Uh, maybe the gems, too. Maybe the oxygen. Okay. You know what? I think we will sell off the polyester just because there's a lot of good or decent deals on this planet, so... I want to have all the room in my cargo bay that I can have. So first thing we're going to buy out all the lava lamps because those are going for bottom market price. Yeah, buy yeah, those. yeah. And uh, what else did I say? We're getting gems. See, those can sell for a good bit. And oxygen, it's not a bad deal. So we'll fill up the rest of our cargo bay with oxygen. Now, there's still some oxygen left that I could buy here on Vex, as you could see, but my cargo is full. Eventually, we'll have a, a ability to store goods in a warehouse. So if I had my warehouse available here, what I'd do is I'd dump off some oxygen in my warehouse and then buy up the remainder of it here, since oxygen is going at such a pretty good deal here. All right, so what do we have? Lava lamps, oxygen, gems. Well, gems sell for the most, so let's see which planet needs gems. Okay, Hork only has 3% gems. Well, what are the other ones we have? Okay, lava lamps and oxygen. Okay, how is Hork on lava lamps and oxygen? Lava lamps, 13%. Oxygen, 11%. Okay, so Hork is really lacking in all of the commodities that we just bought. So that's definitely our next destination work. All right, let's go. Your insurance agent. Due to a reassessment of your company's accident records, your Voyager's insurance premiums have been lowered an average of 33%. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Not that I was going to buy any anyway. <laughs> hey, look, our status is average merchant. We're moving up in the world. We're second place, second to Hoffmeister. That was that jerk dude I warned y'all about at the beginning. Oh, man, we're trailing behind by a fair way, too. Okay. All right, now we are introducing a new f feature called fuel. Pretty self-explanatory. You got to buy fuel for your spaceship. Right, here's our graph. You can see we're in the blue, Kellerman Industrial here. We are seeing a fairly linear gain. Uh, this purple here, that's Hoffmeister. Hoffmeister is uh, on a much more sloped, uh, a much more steeper increase. So we got to catch up to him. All right, let's dump these off. 
Oh, gems are selling at maximum market value. Excellent. Sell all of those. 18 grand right there from the gems alone. Oxygen also selling at a pretty good price. And lava lamps. Oh, almost selling at maximum price. So good. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Look at that. 40 grand profit right there. All right. So can we find any good deals? Yes, we can. Hair tonic is going for bottom price range here. So we want to buy out all of it. Anything else we can get for a decent price? Uh... Hair tonic's really the only good deal we can find here. Mm. I, mean, uh, I guess umbrellas are kind of midway. Because I want more umbrellas filling up my cargo. Sure. All right. So we need to find a planet lacking hair tonic and umbrellas. All right. Who has the least hair tonic? Quag has zero hair tonic. Everyone on Quag is having a bad hair day. That's all right. We will fix that. And they only have 26 umbrellas, too, so we could flip those, probably make a profit. So Quag is where we're going next. Uh, let's view the city of Hork. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Where did we say we're going? Quag. All right. So, Quag's a little far away. Hopefully we don't get beaten up. Quaso Muta. The ghost-like spirit of the venerated Quaso Muta appears before you. The spirit warns you not to travel to Quag or your luck will change for the worse. Instead, you should travel to Stai immediately. Do you take this advice and travel to Stai? IRL, of course, not being a superstitious person at all. Uh... I would not give that a second thought and ignore it completely. But since it's a video game, you know what? Let's take Quasomuta's advice and see what happens if we travel to Stai instead. All right, the status is average merchant. Very good. Still getting beaten out of fairway by Hofmeister. Welcome to Stai, headquarters of the Traders Union. All right. So, from this point onwards, uh, I will decide when to add new features to the game. Just click on the Add New Feature button below, and passengers will be added to the game. Okay, I will do that. If uh, you wish to wait until later to add this feature, just click Continue. I'll add a new feature every turn, so let's add passengers. Since you added passengers to the game, you can make money transporting passengers from one planet to another. And we'll continue. So basically, we're kind of moving in on Uber's business. We're, we're basically now, if you were to have a merger between Uber, Wells Fargo, and SpaceX. Oh, okay. It looks like a Hofmeister here is kind of plateaued out, and their, their steep gains here have ceased suddenly. So hopefully we can keep on this nice, steady upward, uh, upward slope. Okay, let's go to the marketplace. So we weren't originally intending to come here. So our umbrellas, we definitely don't want to sell because we'll lose money. We'll sell our hair tonic, though. We'll make some money doing that. Whoa. Any good deals I could find here? Um, we could get a good deal on umbrellas. Yeah, let's buy more umbrellas. All right, now our cargo bay is full. We weren't able to buy all of the umbrellas because we don't have a warehouse yet, but that's okay. So, umbrellas. We have our cargo full of nothing um but umbrellas. So, who needs them the most? Vex. I hope it is not a rainy day on Vex because there are no umbrellas on Vex, but we will change that. Now, let's pick up passengers. As you can see, there are three passengers available. It says here, passengers waiting, three. We have a passenger capacity of eight. We have zero currently on the ship. And so far, we have made no profit from passengers. Now, you could set your ticket price here. You can either set it manually to a specific price, click lower, middle, 
or upper if you want a shortcut. I usually like to price them in the middle at least to start and kind of get a feel for what's going on. So let's pick up three passengers and we should make a profit of 9,000 Q-Bars, right? Oh, three, okay, 3,000. Oh, because the ticket price for this week was 1,000. Okay, I get it, I get it. All right. So it's an easy extra 3,000. Okay. Uh, where did we say needed umbrellas vex? So we got our passengers. Our fuel tank is looking good. We're almost full. Let's go to vex. All right. It's a little far away, but we got a fast trip. Hey, it's your lucky day. You win the lottery and receive 10,800 Q-Bars. Uh, must have been a scratch-off ticket, because, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that's nice. I'm not complaining, but, I mean, that's not like a whole lot. Hey, look who's in number one. Suck it, Hoffmeister. We're a striving merchant. And back to the capital of Kakubia we go. And we're going to add a new feature this turn. We will be adding the feature of crew. Since you added crew to the game, you must pay your ship's crew a salary. Continue. Aha, Hoffmeister's going down. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, right. Okay. So let's just pick up passengers right away. Now, there's only one passenger waiting this time. That might be because we raised the ticket price from 1,000 to 3,000. We can mitigate the small amount of passengers there once we add the feature of advertising next turn. But for now, let's pick up the one passenger. Let's go to the marketplace, sell off these umbrellas. Got them for 92, sell them for 303. And we've got 100 tons of umbrellas, so... Let's sell it. Great deal. 21 grand. All right. Ooh, and we can get a good deal on lava lamps. Yeah, Let's buy yeah, those yeah. out. Anything else? Um, Ogle Sand, maybe. Definitely not Cryptoons. We can get a good deal on all of the low price stuff up here, but again, I mean, it, the maximum price is so little, I question if it's even worth it. I think I'd rather spend a little more than the bottom price and get Ogle Sand, so we'll buy that out. And let's just round out the last 5% of our cargo with something... Uh, diapers, sure. Five tons of diapers. Who doesn't need five tons of diapers in their life? Okay. So, Ogle Sand and Lava Lamps. Who needs Ogle Sand and Lava Lamps? Frack has no ogle sand, 66% lava lamps. Hork has no lava lamps, but a fair glut of ogle sand. So we want to go to Frack, it looks like. We already picked up our one passenger, right? Yes, we did. Okay. Fuel tank is still good to go. We don't owe our crew any wages yet. We'll start paying them next turn. All right. And so, off to Frack. Uh, it's a little far. Hopefully we don't get beaten out there. Hey, you inherit money. A rich relative has died and left you 12,000 Kubars. Okay, I will take it. Oh, what's this now? Supporting art. Your company is approached by The Wobbler, a starving artist. The Wobbler asks you to sponsor his next avant-garde theatrical production. It will cost 13,600 Kubars and probably won't make any money. However, it will be an artistic masterpiece that will go down in history. Yes, I've heard that a lot. Do you give him the money? I mean, if it probably won't make any money, there's really not much sense in doing it. But for the purpose of the let's play and just seeing what happens, you know, usually I say no, but we're going to say yes this time. Let's just see what happens. Oh, surprise, surprise. The Wobbler's experimental play turns out to be a complete flop. Supreme Commander Dred Nicholson calls it a national disgrace and bans it from ever being shown again in public. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have um, the king of all Discord mods here, Dred Nicholson, the head honcho, the big cheese of the universe here. 
All right. Well, so that was a waste of money. Oh, well. I supported the arts. Something I do, I'm very uh, in support of IRL. So, you got that going for us. Still in first place. Welcome to Frack. All right. So, since we added crew to the game, you must pay your ship's crew a salary. The next feature we are going to add is advertising. We'll add it. Here we go. Since you added advertising to the game, you can advertise for your business and get more passengers and cargo. Continue. Oh, Hoff douche. Not looking too well there. What's going on, buddy? Okay. Uh, fuel's getting a little low there. So, marketplace. Ogle Sand is selling for maximum market value. So, let's dump all of that. We can make a f fair turnover on lava lamps, so we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. get rid of those. Diapers. Uh, we have so little of them. We can make a slight profit. Ooh, we could get a good deal on gems. There are only 22, though. I think if you spend money on advertising, you can up the amount that are available on the planet. Or maybe, I don't know, make the price come down? I'm not sure. Either way, I definitely want to buy all the gems. Um, I may hold on to the diapers. We'll buy up all the moon ferns, since they're at uh, bottom value. And, and I could buy more diapers. 91, that's... It's not bad. Let's do it. Let's just use all our cargo space. Okay. So, gems. We need a planet that wants gems. Diapers and or moon ferns. All right, so. Quark has 4% gems. 61% diapers. 69%. Nice. Moon ferns. Uh, let's see. Loro. Anti gems. 25% moon ferns. 47% diapers. Um, I'm thinking I might go to Loro. Yeah, it's overall, I think it would be better. All right. Let's pick up our passengers. So we have two passengers waiting. We'll pick them up. Uh, we owe our crew 6,000 in wages. So, let's pay them. Your crew's morale is high and everyone seems to be happy. Excellent. I think if you go long enough not paying them, they can go on strike or something and that will have all sorts of detrimental effects. Plus, just don't be a douchebag and just pay your crew. Come on. All right, so let's get into advertising. Now, as you can see, you could choose various forms of advertising for your passenger services and your commodities. So passengers, uh, you can see the various forms of advertising have costs associated with them. The higher the cost, the more effective the advertising is likely to be. Uh, I generally go with magazine for passengers. Commodities, we haven't really been able to fill up our cargo hold reliably so we might go for let's go for tv for commodities i mean we have 179 grand we could afford that so we click place ads once you have those selections made all right so now we should be able to get more passengers and more commodities um, we don't need to refuel yet. Where did I say I was going? Loro. Gotcha. All right. To Loro! <laughs> Damn it, really? Wrong destination. Due to a navigation error on the part of your pilot, you end up on planet Quegg. Uh, so I, I just start paying you your salary, and now you start slacking off and... Getting us lost, eh? Is, is that how it's gonna be? Really? Still in first place. By a fair margin. 
Hey, we're an industrious business person. We're starting to get, like, pleasant descriptions of our status. All right. So the next feature you can add is taxes, because who wouldn't want to add taxes into their life? We'll add it, though. Since you added taxes to the game, you must pay taxes for your business. Sorry, but that's life. Okay. So we're doing good. We're doing good. We're on a steady gain. Let's just keep that up, and we should be okay. All right. So how many passengers are there? So there are only two passengers. I would have thought there would be more since we advertised. But, I mean, advertising isn't a, a guarantee. It just ups your chances. I really don't want to decrease the ticket price. Maybe I just will by a little bit. Let's make tickets 2500 All right. Pick up passengers. Here we go. Made six grand from that. And marketplace. Marketplace, marketplace. Uh, well, since we're not on the planet we were intending to go to, we can't make a profit on gems. Uh, we can at least flip our diapers. Make a decent pro. Oh, yeah, those are selling for maximum price. Okay. Great deal. Uh, I guess we made four grand. It's better than nothing. Um, could sell our moon ferns. I mean, we paid next to nothing for them, so might as well. 5.8 grand, that's not the kind of profit we want to be making at this point, but we did land on the wrong planet. Oh, gems, uh, I've bottomed out, so... And there's 70 of them available. Okay, maybe the advertising paid off. Let's buy out the gems. That almost filled our cargo bay. Very good, very good. Anything else? I mean, jelly beans we can get at bottom price, but the most you could sell them for is 80. We'll just buy them anyway, just to round out our cargo bay. All right, so we got a bunch of gems, which is good, because those can sell for a lot. Let's see who needs gems. Loro. Both Loro and Hork. All right, we have a few jelly beans, but, I mean, those that's not enough to be relevant. So we'll go to Loro, since they're only at 6% on gems. Pay our crew. We picked up our passengers, right? Uh, yes, we did. Okay, we owe 900 money, in taxes. Money, money. Passenger taxes accrued. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I love our octopi tax collector alien thing here. <laughs> so we'll just click pay all. There you go. You happy? And uh, where did we say we were going? Um, Loro. Gotcha. So is that close by? Uh, since that's not immediately by, let's uh, refuel. So we're just going to buy fuel. And as usual, you could just click lower, middle, upper if you don't want to put in an exact amount. We'll just click upper, so we'll completely fill up the tank. All right. And to Loro, we go. Fuel tank trouble? Jesus, really? Lumbor, your ship's trusty engineer, discovers a leak in your main fuel tank. Lumbor manages to quickly stop the leak, however, by this time, half your fuel... Oh my god, has already drained away. Alright, so who sold me a ship with a dodgy fuel tank? That's what I want to know. I will sue you back to the Stone Age. What? Because of the mishap you had, ugh, it will take you considerably longer than expected. To reach your destination planet. Thankfully, we're still in number one. Uh, but rope transport is catching up to us because of our uh, unfortunate event we had. Yep, Gizzy Shipping beats you to Loro ahead of you and acquires a shipload of lava lamps for a very low price. Can't win them all. Okay. <sighs> Trading Core 4 makes it to Loro, buys up a shipload of X fuels for a very low price. Speed is a virtue. Yeah, so is not selling me a ship with a dodgy fuel tank. Oh my god, Roke beat us there. Hoffmeister beat us there. There's going to be like nothing, no good deals left for us to buy. Okay, so the next feature we can add is bank. That's very good. That's something we want. 
Since you added bank to the game, you can deposit money in a savings account. This is very good. We want to do that because you will earn 1% uh, interest per week. So now we can begin building a passive form of income by just depositing our extra money into a bank account. So, all right, now at least we can flip these gems and make a good profit. Great deal. Yeah, 48 grand from the gems, okay. All right, so, I mean, not all the stuff has been bought up. Well, we can get Ogle Sand for a pretty good deal. So we'll buy up the Ogle Sand. What else? Oh, we can get a good deal on toasters, too. Okay. Okay, that, we're doing better than I thought we'd do here. Anything else? Hmm. Whipped cream is almost at bottom price. Exotic is not at bottom price, but the maximum it could sell for is so high. I think we'll buy it out. Okay. Definitely don't want to buy gems. <laughs> Um, we'll buy the whipped cream. I mean, I guess you could sell it for 200 Better than nothing. Okay. So, we need planets that want exotic and ogle sand toasters. So, ooh, there's no exotic on Hork. How are they on ogle sand? Uh, got a glut of ogle sand. How about toasters? Uh, medium amount of toasters. All right, who else is low on exotic? Uh, Vex has 25%. Okay, well, there's still lots of ogle sand. How about toasters? 62? Mm, okay. So I think Hork is going to be our best bet, and we'll end up selling our exotic and our toasters. But we'll hold on to our ogle sand since the market is glutted with it there. All right. Ah, uh, I gotta buy fuel again because we had a leak. Let's pay our crew because we're not douche wads. Money, money, money. And good old intergalactic Uncle Sam needs his share too, so we'll pay off our commodity tariffs accrued. Okay. Uh, how many passengers we got? All right, so three passengers waiting. Pick them up. Let's set our ticket price back to middle at 3000 Let's buy some advertising for the next planet. Passengers will... We haven't been getting as many passengers as I'd want, so we're going to up it to radio advertising for passengers. Commodities... Okay, we're doing okay on commodities now. Let's bump that down to radio and place our ads. So we've got a little over 200 grand in cash now. So, oh, let's refuel. Okay, so how much cash now? 198 grand. Now, let's go to the bank. Let's just deposit Ooh. max. So now we'll earn 1% per week on 198,472 Q-bars. All right, and it said we were going to Hork. Okay. All right, let's go to Hork and hopefully not have any mishaps this time. Oh, are, really? Really, after you flopped the first time, you got the balls to ask me to fund your crappy little production again? No. Hey, we're an intelligent merchant, probably because we told that starving artist to go kiss off. Still in number one. Oh, rope transport is on our heels, though. <laughs> okay. The next... Oh, good. The next feature we can add is warehouse. Good. We want to do that. So we'll add that. Since you added warehouse to the game, you can store commodities and warehouses on all seven planets. When visiting the warehouse screen, be sure to click help for more information. <laughs> Kazoom type. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see how much interest we earned. So we got about two grand there just from interest. 
So that's nice. And that'll just only keep going up as we deposit more and more. So let's go to the marketplace. Yes, Exotic is selling for maximum value. Let's dump it. Great deal. Ogle Sand. We can make some profit. I'm wondering if I might want to hold on to it, though. Toasters. Yeah, sure. Could sell our toasters. Uh, and whipped cream can make a little bit of a profit. I think we could hold out and do better, though. Uh, we'll dump the jelly beans. Eight tons of jelly. That's a lot of jelly beans, man. Dang. All right, so what's going for a good price? Ooh, Cryptoons. Okay. Yeah, we'll buy those out. So, good. This is where we could start using our warehouse. You can see there's still some Cryptoons available to buy here on Hork, but our cargo bay is full. So, there's 58 tons to buy yet. Let's go to our warehouse, click Cryptoons, Store, and we're going to put 58 tons of Cryptoons in our warehouse. Oh, don't have enough room left. Okay, how much? 50. All right. We will store then... 50 Cryptoons. Now we can go back to the marketplace and almost buy out the rest of the Cryptoons. Good. Now we got a reserve of stuff here on the warehouse uh, sitting there ready for us. So that's good. All right. So, Cryptoons and Ogle Sand. Who needs Cryptoons and Ogle Sand? Frack. Zero Cryptoons, and only 16% Ogle Sand. Nice. Oh, a Sty, though. 5% Cryptoons, 2% Ogle Sand. I think I'll go for Sty. Yeah, let's mark Sty. How many pass? Okay, good. Our advertising is starting to pay off. We have seven passengers waiting, one less than our capacity. And at a 3,000 ticket price. So pick up our passengers, and look, there's 21 grand from passengers alone. Excellent. I'm wondering if I shouldn't set my ticket price a little higher. Let's just incrementally increase it now that we're getting more passengers. We'll continue advertising because it's paying off. I, I like what we've got now. Radio for passenger and radio for commodities. So place ads. Go back. Um... Oh, got a pair of crew. Money, money, money. Pay taxes. So we don't have a whole lot of money left to put in the bank. But, I mean, we might as well. Good. Put that money to some use. And where were we going? Sty? Okay. Got plenty of fuel. So let's cross our fingers, go to Sty, and hope we don't get hit by an asteroid or some crap. Okay. Oh no! Rope transport overtook us. Money, money, money. Because politicians love to increase taxes, the imperial government raises the import import tariff rate from three percent to four percent. Oh, that is just dandy, isn't it? I'm sure all that those taxes are going to good causes. I'm sure fixing all the intergalactic roads and putting up new intergalactic libraries and everything. Okay. All right. The next feature you can add is Explore Planets. Let's add it. Since you added Explore Planets to the game, you can explore the planets, get weather updates, and follow the local news. Uh, again, that's just... I'm pretty sure that's just fluff. Like, that doesn't have any effect on the gameplay. I don't know if weather has any effect or not. Or the local news might. So, we'll check it out. Okay, let's go to the marketplace. So, Cryptoons are selling at a premium. So, sell those off. Great deal. Yeah, 31 grand. That is a good deal. Ogle Sand also selling for a good amount. <laughs> sell that off. And we can turn our whipped cream for an okay amount. 
Now, what? ooh, we can buy exotic for bottom price, and lots of it, too. Good, good, good. Our advertising is paying off. Let's buy all the exotic. There's a little bit of it left, so let's put 19 tons of it in our warehouse. Now, return to the marketplace and buy out the rest of it, since it's at such a good deal. Anything else for... Ooh, yeah, we can also buy oxygen at bottom market price. And a lot of it. All right, so let's store... Uh, all of our exotic, I guess, or as much of it as we can. Exotic, store. Okay, good. Now our warehouse is filled. Turn to the marketplace. Now we have some room in our cargo hold that we can buy up as much oxygen as we can fit. Excellent. Oh, I wish I had more warehouse space so I could buy up all of it. Same with Babel Seeds, too. There's a lot of good deals here. This is why you want more warehouse space. But we'll, we'll get more as we go on. So, exotic and oxygen. Let's see. There's no exotic on Hork. How are they on oxygen? Eh, 53%. Uh, eight. All right, so Hork looks like it's going to be our best bet for turning a profit with the uh, commodities we have. Let's pay our crew. Money, money, money. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah. Um, it says low on fuel, but I mean, we have a little over half a tank. I think we'll be okay. Oh, let's explore the planet now that we've added that feature. Okay, yeah, see where it says special here? This is where you can take advantage of whatever kind of unique good or service the planet can offer. So, Traders Union Official. Stai is the financial capital of Kukubia and where the Traders Union headquarters is located. While on Stai, you can ask the Traders Union for financial assistance. If you are lucky, they may lower the interest rate on your loan, increase your credit, credit limit, uh, excuse me, or raise the interest rate on your savings account. Well, that's nice, but I mean... We haven't even taken out a loan from them at all. And Mr. Zinn is offering a higher limit and better interest rates anyhow. But I'll just click Ask for Assistance, just to see what happens. Ugh, your plea for assistance backfires. Instead of lowering your rates, the Traders Union raises the interest on your loan from 5% to 6%. Well, now I'm really not going to be borrowing from the Traders Union. Good job. All right. What happens when we click one? I love the sounds for these things. Frack has been experiencing some mighty dry weather lately. Local officials expressed fear that this may turn into a drought. So I don't know if that affects what kind of com uh, scarcity of certain commodities that, like agricultural commodities that might need water to grow. I'm not sure. Let's check the news on Stye. The indigenous creatures of Loro staged a rally this morning to show solidarity and press for more rights over their na native lands. Good for them. I hope they're successful. All right. So that's uh, now we've done basically everything uh, there is to do to explore a planet. You've seen how that all works. Cool. Seven passengers waiting. Good. At our increased ticket price, too. So that's nice. Twenty-four and a half grand from passengers alone. So let's keep advertising. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're doing pretty good with what we have now. So we're just gonna continue saturating the radio with whatever annoying little jingle for our company we've come up with. Come up with a jingle for Kellerman Industrial in the comments below. Winner gets a pat on the back. Now, we have some spare money, so we want to dump that off in the bank now that we've taken care of our commodities, trading, paid our crew, um, pay our taxes, our advertisements. We're okay on fuel. So, let's deposit the rest of this into the bank. So, we got 250 grand approximately in the bank, earning last week two grand. 
Uh, it doesn't seem like much, but it'll add up, especially once we start depositing more and more. Okay, did I mark where I'm going? Hork, yes. All right, let's go to Hork. Okay, Rook is still above us, and by a fair amount. We are a diligent merchant. Due to a glut of fuel on the market... Oh, good, fuel prices are falling. I'm glad I didn't decide to purchase fuel before. You can expect to see lower prices at the refueling docks in the coming weeks. Good, good, that's very good. All right, so the next feature you can add is distance chart. We'll add that. Since you add a distance, distance chart to the game, you can see the exact distance between each planet and the locations of your competitors' ships. The distance chart button is located at the bottom of the galaxy map. Excellent. So now you can kind of get an idea of exactly how far your competitors are from which planet. So uh, you, you can get a better idea of whether or not uh, you can beat them to a certain planet. So first thing, since we know fuel is so cheap right now, we might as well fill up. Oh, we don't have enough. Okay. Let's go flip our commodities first. That's right, because we deposited it in the bank. All right. So we'll sell the stuff first. Ooh, exotic is going for maximum price. Sell, sell, sell. Great deal. Yeah, you ain't just whistling Dixie. All right, we can flip our oxygen for decent profit. Good. Now that we got some money, let's fill up our fuel tank. Fantastic. How many passengers we got? Okay, five passengers. All right. Pick them up. Money, um, money, pay, money. Yeah, money. yeah, shut up. Pay our crew. Uh, let's explore the planet and see what unique feature Hork has to offer. So Hork is the media capital of Kukubia, affectionately known as Horkywood. You have an agent whose job it is to get your company free publicity. This week your agent claims to have a mega media event scheduled for you on Planet Line News. Do you want to do it? Well, they say there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Honestly, IRL, I think that is the absolute most stupid false saying. I hate that saying so much. It's absolutely wrong. But, hey, let's try it out. Let's see what happens. To your horror, you get stuck in a debate with the Cosmic Consumer Caucus, a notorious consumer watchdog. However, instead of bashing you for charging outrageously high passenger fares... Oh, come on. They Oh, they laud you for your efforts to keep costs down... And serve the public. Okay. Okay, so that was it. I, I read the words to your horror and I figured, oh god, okay, here we go. But thank goodness for dishonest uh, talking head political pundits, right? It's working in our favor. So um, that should help us out with passengers then. So that's good publicity. Passengers will see that and think that I'm totally not trying to bilk them for ticket prices and that I'm totally... Uh, uh, trying to give them reasonable rates, so that's good. In fact, now that we have that good, oop, now that we have that good publicity with ticket prices, let's increase mm, not five thousand. Let's increase that up to four thousand, since I'm offering such good deals to my passengers. I mean, come on. All right. So. We need to find... What can we get a good deal on? Cryptoons. Selling for bottom price. Let's buy them out. Okay. Anything else? Selling for a good amount? Ah, yes. Hair tonic. We won't be able to buy all of it out, so we're going to have to store... Let's store um, some of our Cryptoons in the warehouse. Cryptoons. Oh, our warehouse is already... We already have Cryptoons. Okay. Got 50 tons of them. So, if that's the case... Um, we'll keep that store of Cryptoons we have here. And since Hair Tonic is 
going for such a good deal. I mean, we'll, we won't be able to get much of it because we don't have much cargo space. Whoa. But we'll just buy out as much as we can. All right. God, I need to get more warehouse space. Let's check supply and see who is jonesing for cryptoons. Frack has none. And uh, we have another commodity, but not much of it. So this is really the only uh, item that matters here. So looks like we're going to Frack is our next destination. And uh, we already picked up passengers. Yes, five. Paid all our taxes and our crew. Let's keep buying advertising as we have it. Just keep saturating those radio waves. Now that that is all done and we're on a full tank of fuel, let's deposit... Oh, Deposit all of our extra moolah in the bank. There we go. Over 300k in the bank. Good. So we'll be making about 3,000 per week now. All right, that's everything to do here. We explored, right? Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, Frack's kind of far away, but we'll chance it. Okay. Hey, we're back in first place. Good stuff. And we're an advent ad ad advantageous trader. Darn right we are. Money, money, money. Because Supreme Commander Dred Nicholson has run up a big deficit, the Imperial government raises the export tariff rate from 2 to 3%. Lovely. It's not my fault that government can't financially manage their way out of a paper bag. Okay. So the next feature we can add is facilities. That's good. We want, we want that. So we're going to add that. Since you added facilities to the game, Emperor Dred Nicholson will auction off government facilities to the highest bidder. The company that buys a facility can charge other trading companies a fee every time they visit the planet where the facility is located. So this is basically the equivalent of uh, buying property and putting down like a little plastic house on one of your properties when playing Monopoly. Excuse me. The facilities button appears right next to the distance chart button at the bottom of the galaxy map. So I think it's random when Dred Nicholson will auction off these facilities, but you really want to get these facilities. You really want to try and win these auctions. Because especially once you start buying multiple facilities, that can really add up as a great source of passive income. Okay, so what are we doing? Let's pick up passengers. Got four passengers. We did raise our price a little bit because of that good publicity we got. Um, but I don't know. That might be driving our passengers down. Pick them up. Hmm. Let's set our ticket price back down to 3000 See if that can't get us more passengers. Money, money. Pay our taxes. Let's pay our crew. And visit the marketplace. So, Cryptoons we could sell for a lot. And we could sell our... We don't have much hair tonic, but we could sell it for a Whoa. decent amount. Nice. Ooh, we could buy exotic and lots of it for bottom price. Yes, yes, yes. No. Do we have anything in our warehouse here? No, we don't. So, uh, there's six of exotic left. Any other good deals on anything? Not necessarily. But let's go store six tons of exotic in our warehouse. This way we can buy up the rest of it here, because it's such a good deal. Um, and we'll just go with that, because that can sell for a lot. All right, who's in the market for exotic? Hork is. Okay. Now we picked up our passengers already. Did we advertise already? No, we did now. Good on taxes and crew wages. Oh, let's explore Freck. And let's see what the special feature is here. 
Frack is a bustling business center, while on Frack you can pay a visit to the Voyager's insurance company headquarters and ask for a reduction in your weekly premiums. So, I mean, even though we haven't been buying insurance, let's just try it anyway and see what happens. Hi. The insurance company informs you that their rates are absolutely the lowest in all the galaxy. Okay. Sure they are. Sure they are. Uh, let's see what the news is here. The Hungo Warriors met today with the Imperial Magistrate and demanded that Dred Nicholson surrender, or they would continue their war against the Nicholson dynasty. Needless to say, the Imperial Magistrate did not surrender the entire empire to a few hundred renegades. Hmm. Alright, what's the weather in here? It's, it's cloudy over Mira these days. Expect occasional showers, but it should clear up later in the week. Neat. All right, we're good on fuel. We've got our commodities. Paid off everything we need to pay off, so let's deposit. Oh, I always misclicking here. Ugh, and now I need to readjust the bandy cam window. There we go. All right, let's deposit our Ooh. excess money in the bank. And to the next planet, to Hort we go. I think that's where we just were, so we're kind of going back and forth between the same planets, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Cool, so we're in first place by a decent margin. Uh, alright. Ah, uh, well, okay, Gizzy beat us to the planet and snatched up the goods. Same with Trading Core 4, same with Vandergriff, same with Hoffmeister. Good lord. Alright, so the next feature we can add is stock markets. I think this is the last feature that we're going to add in the game, so we'll add it. Yes, tutorial completed. Congratulations, you have reached to the end of the tutorial. The final feature called Stock Markets has been added to the game. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Each planet you visit, you can buy shares of like that planet instead of shares of a company. And based on how the stock of that planet is doing, you could sell it out or hold on to it and hope it increases and sell out for a higher price. So now that we've basically gone through the whole tutorial and explained everything there is to explain on the game, I mean, the rest of this, uh, the gameplay is going to get kind of redundant and grindy, but like I said, it's... Um, it's the chill play series, so it's this is just kind of meant as something you could put on as you know white noise or background noise, something to fall asleep to. How long have we even been recording? Let's see. Oh, an hour twenty-two. Okay. So it's going to take a long time for someone to reach five million Q bars. I probably won't show the whole uh, game getting to 5 million. Or if I do, I'm going to have to break this up in parts. Actually, maybe now that we've completed the tutorial, what I will do, I will save our game here and call this our first episode of the Chill Play series. So, save our game. Kellerman Industrial. Enter. And now that our game has been saved, we can quit. So this is Norman signing off. Um, if it's evening, wherever you are watching this, have a good night, and I wish you many pleasant dreams. Peace out.